Welcome back to Third Phase of Moon. My name's Blake Cousins, and our special guest this week, Stan Romanick, famous for his video that was featured on Larry King Live of an apparent alien outside his window. Thanks for joining us right here at Third Phase of Moon, Stan. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm excited. You know, non-believers are constantly asking physical, tangible proof of ET visitation. Your case is filled with some of the most incredible evidence. If you were to present your case to the worldwide audience, what smoking gun footage would you offer? You know, I, I thought about that, that question, and, you know, there is so much evidence, really, probably a live extraterrestrial, you know, one that you can have uh, interaction with. Here's a sad thing, um, even within my own family, you know, for instance, my brother, I could bring a live ET to him and he'd tell me it was a child in a costume. So sometimes, even though you have the most amazing evidence, people just refuse to believe because of fear. You have implants and artifacts in your possession now. What would it take to bring your evidence, expose it to the world, and make other governments start to disclose? You know, it's not about how much proof you have. I found that out. I've got enough proof. I've got totes and totes of, you know, physical evidence. I have, um, you know, some amazing video. I have uh, video footage from um, surveillance VCRs that are used. Um, these surveillance VCRs are actually used in the court in a court of law, so they have special coding on them. You know, sometimes it doesn't matter. Sometimes you can have all the proof in the world, but if it goes on deaf ears, it doesn't. It doesn't make a difference. You've had several incidents happen to you in front of people and their cameras. Do you think it is a deliberate act of high strangeness and is part of the ETs to prove themselves to the people? Oh, absolutely. And, and see, that's what makes my case so different. Most everything that happens, happens with people around. So, um, I don't have to explain myself. Now, you're talking about, you know, producers for you know, huge television um, companies um, recently at National Geographics here, and they captured all kinds of stuff. Um, it was hosted by James Fox, and the network refused to show the stuff they captured and decided to make a joke of it all, and James Fox quit over the whole ordeal. So is this the reason why the Nat Geo shut down chasing UFOs on National Geographic? Yeah, that's, you know, from what I understand, that's it, you know. James Fox was duped, just like everybody else. It's, you know, further proof that these big networks are controlled by somebody, something that doesn't want this information out. But look, you know, there is so much evidence from government, from, you know, uh, people coming out from, you know, uh, the military. It's overwhelming, but still there are people that refuse to believe. And there is a concerted effort to keep this quiet for whatever reason. And personally, I think it's because, you know, the powers that are in charge of that stuff have some kind of vested interest monetarily in keeping it quiet. You have a name you go by, and the visitors call you Starseed. Can you explain to us further what this means? It started with a bizarre phone call or message left on our answering machine, and it was a British, British woman's voice, mechanical voice. We later found out that the voice we thought was from a text-to-speech program, and we always thought somebody was messing around and it started calling me Starseed. We later, later learned that, you know, we believe that the majority of these uh, communications are from off-world visitors. That doesn't mean it couldn't be black ops or something like that, but the technology they use, they utilize their own technology, and they manipulate it in such a way that I don't know how they do it. Now, as you know, a text-to-speech program, you type something down, and then it takes a few seconds to, you know, manip uh, not manipulate it, read it, and then it, it, it comes back with a audible version of what you wrote down. 
whatever this is, we've had up to two hour conversations with this voice that we call Audrey. And, you know, uh, other weird things. We've had other um, contact kind of stuff, not just that. And for some reason, they always call me Starseed. I don't know if it's their nickname for me, pet name, I'm not sure. We're excited right here at Third Phase of Moon with some new footage that you're going to share with us in regards to alien abduction and UFOs. Can you explain the material that we're looking at right now? Um, sure. Well, let's see. The first one uh, I sent you, <laughs> I can't show you the video, but I can show you the still stills. You know, I'm pretty famous for the E.T. in the window uh, video. We thought was a peeping Tom, and I took video of it. Um, you know, set up a video camera, see if I could catch this thing, and it ended up being uh, an, an alien looking in my window. Um, I've gotten a lot of flack for that. There's a lot of people say that it's fake, that it's computer generated. It's not computer generated. We had it analyzed by some of the top professionals in the world. Um, that being said, that is just one small piece of evidence that I have. I sent you a still from another video um, we nicknamed Grandpa Gray. Um, I had a sit well, I fell asleep at my computer. And my stepson had some friends over that evening, and it was about 12 o'clock at night. I, my computer was hacked, and I was fixing my computer. And I woke up because I see, I heard movement, and I open one eye, and I see a naked figure running into the kitchen. I'm thinking, holy crap, my stepson is doing some kind of weird dare, and, you know, I'm going to get my video camera, I'm going to catch him, and then blackmail him later to clean his room or something. Well, I, I, I look all over the house, nothing. I go upstairs and my stepson and his friends are fast asleep and I just, I'm totally confused. I'm just about to turn off my camcorder when I see this thing looking at me from the sliding glass door in my dining room. And at first I'm thinking, somebody's gotta be playing some kind of joke. It's gotta be some kind of costume something. As I got closer um, in the video, you can hear how distraught I am because I cuss a lot when I get scared. And I totally flip out. I go from, and it kind of, it ducks down, it closes its eyes, and it kind of um, moves, you know, away from the, the, the glass door and kind of disappears. And I go from the uh, dining room to the kitchen to the dining room to the kitchen looking for something. There's nothing. And the last time that the video, uh, last time you see me doing anything on the video, there's like three or four flashes of light that suddenly shine up on the windowsill of the kitchen. And I literally, uh, while well, I wake up on the uh, kitchen floor 45 minutes later, remembering absolutely nothing except for the flashes of light. If it, if it wasn't for the fact that I captured this thing on camera, I would have never remembered anything. This is great, Stan. I'm wondering, do you think the government is still following you around and bugging your home? <laughs>